Hi everyone, uh, I'm Charles. So, trying to port LTTNG to Android, so why do we want to do that? What LTTNG allows us to do that we cannot do at the moment? Well, we want to be able to trace kernel and user space at the same time and have that in a single uh, unified trace. And as Android is also using mostly Java and LTTNG can trace Java apps, then if you can trace kernel native application and Java application, then you cover most cases of application development on Android. Um, another really interesting um, feature of LTTNG is that you can stream your traces to network. So as most Android devices are not development devices, I mean, you're developing on your computer, pushing your code to your uh, phone or tablet, then it's really useful to be able to consume your trace directly to your computer while you're running the app. Um, so what's so different on Android that uh, it doesn't work out of the box? Um, well, the build system is different. So people who have developed uh, Android application uh, knows that there's the android.mk files. Um, the, uh, the shared memory is also different. So instead of using system uh, VIPCs like uh, as shared memory, uh, Android has its own HMEM, which stands for anonymous, anonymous shared memory. Um, another difference would be in Ptread, which is included in Android's Bionic, uh, which is the Android's Libsyn, uh, which doesn't prov provide a full implementation of the Ptread's pause extender. Um, so first, the build, uh, build system. Um, Android.mk files are quite useful as you can use them with the NDK or within the Android source tree. Uh, but if you want to use the Android make file, you need to rewrite your own. So as LTTNG is, uh, is using autoconf, uh, all the auto tools, while just setting up uh, environment variables to use uh, those existing uh, build system will allow us to eventually generate Android make files from uh, those uh, this build system. Um, there are some uh, problems with the Android native development toolkit not exposing uh, all the functional API of Android. So. A quick way of fixing that is to directly build within the uh, AOSP source code. Uh, another way would be to add additional uh, compatible layers to um, LTTNG project. Um, so for the P thread, uh, so the two major functions that are missing in, my, in this case would be ptread cancel and ptread con time void. Um, so first, ptread cancel is used to kill the consumer thread uh, whenever it failed to initialize. Uh, so, other, in any other case, uh, the thread will be stopped cleanly by a, uh, with a with a pipe. So, it's really in last resort. So for now. Only switching the ptread cancel to ptread kill uh, seems to work fine, uh, which is not totally a good idea, but uh, that's the best way uh, I worked out for now. Um, ptread can time wait. Uh, Android doesn't expose that function, although it exposes a uh, function uh, with only monotonic uh, and as um, the, con uh, the condition used in LTTNGR all using the monotonic clock, uh, then switching to that function is not a problem. Um, for what's a shared memory? Um, so the big difference between HMEM and SHM is that HMEM is anonymous, so you cannot share um, memory with a path. Uh, this is not a problem most of the time in LTTNG, as um, 
most of the memory regions are shared to file descriptors. Um, although uh, there's one special case where it's used to share mute, uh, futex. Um, so that case is when you want to notify the daemon that uh, the application started, so you want to record the events. Or, um, yes. So basically, um, um, this futex will be in shared memory and memory map. Uh, so just using a simple file instead of shared memory uh, seems to work for now because I couldn't use Unix socket or pipes to synchronize in that case, uh, as it, it, can it can work both ways. Either the session uh, wakes up the application or the application wakes up the session, the daemon. Um, and there's a lot of um, missing definitions in Android. Uh, this is not a big deal, uh, but this is things that needs to be added uh, to a compatible play, uh, just defining them to values that are usually um, common. Um, so this is much more of a summary of what I just talked about, uh, the layout slides. Uh, so this is so there's some functions uh, which are just not exposed through the API, but have a hidden implementation. Uh, and there's the mission functions which don't have really equivalents. Um, and those are the trickier one. So there's, uh, I haven't talked about the get PUID, but in the case of LTTNG, it's only used to get the user on directory. So um, a dummy way of re-implementing it is just to send back uh, SD card as on Android, that's the only, uh, that's where the on directory is. Um, yeah, so. <clears throat> the patches are not upstream yet as uh, it fails to compile on Linux when I, with the change I've made. So uh, that's going to be within the next weeks, uh, going to be pushed back on the LTTNG mailing list. Um, eventually, I'd like to add Java tracing capabilities. Uh, I haven't tried it yet, so I, it might work. Uh, but um, yes, that would be interesting and eventually integrated into the AOSP source tree so that LTTNG might come within the next Android release, not five, but further. Um, so, any questions? Um, so about Java tracing, just perhaps uh, an information point uh, that uh, uh, so we have JUL uh, login support. Uh, so basically, the, the the existing JUL infrastructure to have the loggers and log from Java uh, can export. Uh, can we, we have an LTTNG Java agent with a handler that we can connect on that, so it can export the traces through USD. And uh, with uh, LTTNG 2.6 that we are uh, releasing uh, in a few days, uh, so we have uh, Log4j uh, also H, uh, uh, support. Uh, so we, this is another Java tracing, uh, well, logging uh, infrastructure that we also support. So chances are that it's going to work out pretty well as soon as you have a LTTNG USD uh, set up on Android. Sure. Questions? Thank you, Charles. Thank you.